Greetings and salutations, friends, and welcome back. Uh, I hope that we're welcoming some new friends as well as old friends. Um, boy, I don't know what to say about this one. A, a bunch of people sent me this gentleman's information and uh, some podcasts that he was on. And uh, I, I don't even know what to say, okay? Uh, he He's in contact with aliens and that's could be the best starting point of any interview i've ever had i suppose and also it's important that uh you know i gotta say this right here some of you are very very skeptical and so am i and some of you have encouraged me to be more open-minded and to explore some of the strange experiencers and people that have these strange experiences and i thought uh i thought this could be a good place to start with something like that mic issues <laughs> see what happens when you try to do something different i try to use the new mic today hold on friends worked fine in testing of course Check one. All right, we're gonna have to go with that one. Again, I suppose. And I'll have to do more testing. I hope that's better. I am close. <laughs> we're gonna have to go with uh, the uh, other mic. So I apologize for the audio issues. See what happens when I try to make improvements? Worked in testing. Uh, it is what it is, friends. So. Uh, Richard McGill is our subject tonight, a person who claims to be in contact with uh, extraterrestrial aliens and uh, doing this project with this group of extraterrestrial aliens. And like I said, I'm not sure what to think about this, but instead of uh, doing a whole lot, you know, I listened to some of the podcasts and heard the basis of his story, we're going to bring him in and... Uh, well, we're not going to grill him too much, but we're going to try to uh, get to the bottom of some of his fantastic claims. Okay, let's see. Oh, where's the water cup? Richard McGill. Hello. So you're in contact with extraterrestrial beings. Pretty much. That's the way I like to think of things, yes. <laughs> and do you want to for the benefit of our viewers, tell us how these contacts with these alien beings began. Absolutely. So on my 30, I've never been to science fiction at all. I've never even seen the original Star Wars. But on my 31st birthday, I saw a light flash in the sky. And that got me interested in the subject of extraterrestrials. So I watched a lot of YouTube videos on how to contact aliens. I saw one video. It said just go out and pray to aliens and ask them to come down. Like basically, like Stephen Greer has made a whole career out of it, basically, right? So I, I, I was a forklift driver. I worked afternoons, so I'm up one, two, three in the morning. I and I try to contact uh, aliens. Okay, I'm just so I, I'm in a uh, garage with my buddy. So if you hear any whispering, no, I'm, it's quite all right. <laughs> uh, we're, you know, I understand. I'm, I'm, busy I'm, guy. <laughs> yeah, busy guy. Yeah, so, <laughs> Fifteen minutes in of praying to the universe. I see a light skip across the sky for two seconds. I was so excited. I continued to try to interact with them, them for every day uh, for a couple of weeks. And basically, long story short, I invited aliens into my house to party, asked them to make me a smiley face in the sky, and a couple of weeks of interacting with the stars and the moon, which are most likely UFOs or sentient individuals. Uh, I was filming a star 4.30 in the morning, and it locked onto my cell phone. Basically, let me show you. Okay, this is so. And from then on, I've been like the I'm like Doctor Doolittle with invisible UFO energy. This is this is the canvas I made. I made this little picture. Um, it's uh, marker and paint. Oh, no, I put it far. You have to put it farther away to see. 
No, but just just to be clear, because some people aren't familiar with the other parts of your story. So you're saying that aliens made that artwork, and you no, just no, no, I made it. But we'll watch okay. as invisible right. well, crop circles. Basically, what we all know is crop circles is like their form of guerrilla marketing. So, but why we don't? There's only a couple videos that you see like uh, UFOs making the crop circles. For me, it's either microscopic or a little insect size, or mainly it's it's invisible. So this is I made this. I put it, but it, and we'll watch watch for thirty seconds, and it's and you'll see invisible UFO energy. It's all around us. I'm probably not the only one that this is happening to, but possibly okay. it is. So just let's just watch it for thirty seconds, and it'll be hard. You know, it's continuously moving. And I've spent the past three years doing this. Basically, all right, well, well, here let me. I'll uh, I'll uh, let me solo you then, and everybody can look at your. You, so we're supposed to look at this for 30 seconds and we're all continuously, continuously look at it for it's really it's really hard to see that's the thing like most people are oblivious they look at it for one second and they turn their heads and give me an, a logical explanation oh you're just well, delusional. you know if you stare oh, at anything for oh, if, if you stare intently at anything sometimes you'll get spots in front of your eyes couldn't this be explained as that this uh possibly but just to play the devil's advocate and one more question and this is important in all your contacts with aliens and again i don't mean this in a derogatory way but when you have all these contacts with aliens is there drugs involved at all or oh, of you... course of course buddy oh okay so this could explain buddy, some buddy, of this like, aliens party i got pictures this is my book i've got pictures they make pictures in weed <laughs> It, we it aliens like to party. Like I'm just by myself, fill, sprinkling substances, and but the way this is all uh, happened, that there's no question in my mind. I've got the amount of evidence I have is besides invisible UFO energy making. Okay, but let's let's move on with the story. So first, you just start having these little contacts or seeing things. How do we get? How do we get from there to you're going to be the personal photographer for aliens? I was a little confused on that jump. <laughs> so I see a light skipper cross the sky for two seconds. I was so excited. I continue interacting them, interacting with the the stars. Basically, you just they move left, move right in your mind, and slowly they move a little bit, and continuous persistence. Um, for a couple of weeks of doing this, every night after work. And then 4.30 in the morning, I'm filming a star, and uh, it, for literally from space, it locked onto my cell phone. And a half a blue circle in the, where the lens is, it, it created a half, blue, half a blue circle. And moving the, the cell phone around, I have that video still. It's on an old cell phone. I will try and regurgitate it, <laughs> revive it, and uh, put that up. But from space, a star locked onto my cell phone, and I'm moving it around, and the light was was continuously moving and then i was so like what's going on have i lost my mind <laughs> and then um well, could this be the effects of the drugs that you were on during this experience no, but I, uh, you can see the Ven I, I sent you a picture oh you, you, was, yeah, there's a video of this Venezuela, okay. the Venezuela. Okay. that was before i even did any drugs <laughs> i was i was 19 and i went traveling to venezuela okay, so you have had some experiences like this without the drugs no i didn't even know that they were there that's the thing but okay. um yeah, I've smoked weed for since I was 15, so I'm not gonna lie to you. But uh, so then, well, I'm just playing the devil's advocate because a lot of times when people say they see things, this is like, could this be a DMT trip? Could this be LSD? And you're, you know, uh, Correct, seeing right. seeing you're you're hallucinating these these exactly. events and these things. The um the 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 ogre rock that I I sent you when I was I took a hit of acid maybe. Uh, maybe a year ago, <laughs> I looked into the mirror, and I kid you, I looked like that, the picture on the rock. <laughs> so, which came first, the hallucinogenic drugs? Or, but okay, that's that's the thing, actually. When I was in Venezuela, I, I bought a joint off a of hit. I was 19 after one year of university. I was sick and tired of it. I wanted to get into advertising. I would try to cho choice between uh, being a lawyer advertising, and then I chose advertising, and after the first year, I didn't like the course, and I went to traveling to Venezuela, just 19 years old, without speaking Spanish or knowing uh, the murder rate in Venezuela. But I just 38 days traveling around paradise there, <laughs> regardless of what 
Trump says. Um, <laughs> hey, I agree with you. All the all the all the South American countries are beautiful in their own way, regardless of the shit that's going on in them. They're still beautiful places. It's beautiful places. Exactly. So I was in uh, the capital of the Amazon jungle called Puerto Yacucho, and I bought a joint off some hippies, and I'm like, it went down a. N- n- uh, went to with some kids to a like a day trip to a natural waterfall, and I was smoking it. And you're in the the just at the start of the Amazon jungle, and everything started moving, like vibrating. And I used that feeling to get to make contact with aliens. So that's so okay. Um, but but then you know you you're saying now though that you're like their photographer or you know yeah so, so uh, listen i have a very obvious question that's got to be on everybody's minds if you're the personal photographer to a group of extraterrestrial aliens why don't you have like a clear picture of the aliens themselves because we can show some of the stuff we'll we'll show some of the stuff that you do have but yeah well the one picture i because <laughs> they're in other dimensions and okay. They're but, interdimensional aliens. Most likely, yes. But that's why they we can't really see them just using your third eye. And how do you take a picture using your third eye? It's like impossible, right? So we've dev- devised a way that documenting their art. That it's like um, the game Sim Yeah, Sim- and that's, that's something I want to get into. So these extraterrestrials are artists. And they make art. And then you have documented the art of the extraterrestrials. That you let, me show you a quick, let me show you a quick thing. Are you talking? Please be quiet. <laughs> let me show you a quick thing. There's two, two shots of a night sky in my backyard. Nothing. I adjust the settings. And then this big thing. Nothing. And this. Sorry, what was your question? <laughs> Answer his question, buddy. Uh, sorry, go on. <laughs> no, my question is. I just want to like show. Like, I, I, I wasn't a question. I was saying so. So these extraterrestrials are making art, and you're you've got a, a whole book full of the extraterrestrials' artwork. Correct. And you're giving half of the money to like charity for that. Yeah, basically, it, which is I, very altruistic. But I'm still not like, really, not really. I have to. Aliens understand the concept of a monopoly, and they play for keeps. They found okay. someone who had a financially. I my uncle was a really uh, like president of a major uh, pharmacy. Please be quiet, Daniel. I can't. <laughs> Sorry, my buddy is coaching me on camera. It's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> this is his. This is his work. Yeah, he's an artist. Oh, this is his brand seven seven seven. Please tell me you're the uncle of the shopper. Yeah, I'm trying to, Daniel. Please. <laughs> okay, relax, Daniel. It's I know, all good. Daniel. We're all friends here. It's a very laid back show. So I know, relax. Yeah. everybody relax. <laughs> We're trying to get back to the topic though, is like so so the aliens make art and then you take pictures of it. It's like crop what we know as crop circles is kindergarten level compared to what they make. It's like but it's very hard to see. There is one video uh, on my YouTube channel, Richard McGill, M-A-G-I-L-L, that has um, basically what Stephen Greer has said, has a um, whole mile-wide UFO can shrink down into a basketball-sized UFO. So I have a video in which an insect-sized UFO floats onto the screen. When I, when I basically it started me stepping in, into my dirty shower, my townhouse was a pigsty. And I noticed uh, rudimentary alien faces on the scum of the bathroom, of the bathtub. And I'm like, what's going on? And you see it moving, 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 a, a mist. And then uh, from that moment on, I, I quit my forklift job and made the pictures. But the, it, but it's it's invisible, invisible UFOs. But th- this one video, a little insect-sized UFO wobbles onto this, or floats onto the screen, wobbles back and forth. And then makes a slow motion uh, back. Yeah, and listen, I don't, I don't want to interrupt you, but I've seen this video. And yeah. listen, again, playing the devil's advocate here. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not being, we're not judging you. I hope we could talk like friends and just disagree yeah. if we disagree. Yeah, but but yeah, when no, I saw that video, and yeah, it could be an extraterrestrial insect sized alien flopping oh, around there. Or it could be an yeah. ordinary earth fly or mosquito. But then at the five minutes later, it goes to the other end of edge of the paper and it it, it pops out of our dimension. I've had or people it flies around the surface. 
you know, fly well, around the surface awesome. and you don't see it in again. What's that? I just got the impression that it just flew up around the thing or, you know, like it looked like a bug to me. That's all I'm saying is it looked like a yeah. bug. Well, I know that the video is not the greatest quality. It was a shitty uh, tablet. Yeah, and we'll share some of this artwork stuff that you've got on your uh, on your Twitter. You've got a bunch of different stuff, and then. Uh, but we yeah. go back to your, sorry, going back to your question about why don't you don't have a picture of them? They actually took a picture on my cell phone, which I consider the the first alien UFO <laughs> selfie. So <laughs> that that's the one time. They actually, um, I say I'm the photographer, but they took that picture. So the story that goes with that is I'm by myself taking pictures. I sprinkle substance down and invisible UFO whip it up. UFOs whip it up into art. But um, yeah, one you want to tell me about this? Because this is another one that I kind of went, well, it looks like graphene or sand on white graphite, paper. Graphite. graphite. Yeah. Sprinkle. Okay. Graphite or sand on white paper. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I am somewhat cultured and familiar with art projects. Yeah. Or not. And to me, I remember an art teacher of mine making us do this sort of project where it's well, just, like sand just, or graphite. Just sprinkle or, something down. That's all I do is sprinkle it down. I don't do anything. I don't make anything with okay. it. Okay. Well, you're saying that the aliens made this or yeah. they modify yeah. it after you throw the stuff down, they start working on it, right? Right. You have to keep moving this. It's like how crop circles are visible from far away. So the scaling they do is so preposterous. You have to keep moving uh, the screen or you yourself back from it, and then it'll come into focus. But usually it's so far away, you can't really see what the heck's going on. You have to take uh, your I'm trying to find, you know, like, I don't, don't know. know. It's like, it's yeah, like. I'm just trying to see, like, do I see anything in there other than, like, blotches of graphite? And I don't. Yeah. Maybe I'm not very involved. Yeah, yeah. No, but you have to keep moving back, and it gets a certain point where it comes into focus. But yeah, <laughs> I know. Trust me, I've taken twenty thousand pictures. And I still and isn't don't. It, some of this has got to be a lot like that. Uh, oh, geez, there's a word for it where you know, like you see a lion in a cloud because your mind starts making patterns out of chaos. We're designed to do that. So exactly. I mean, Perhaps yes, but then that's pretty sure why. I could make something like this that people could see all kinds of different stuff in. You know, that, that's why I showed you the picture, the UFO picture case. This is the skipping one. This is the 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 black black and then the seven object UFO. This yeah, is we can we can look at what is, what is this looks like a rock, a painted yeah. rock to me. No, not painted. That's the ogre rock I was telling you about. That it looks like uh, when I did a hit of acid, I looked in the mirror and I was like, I looked like that. Kind of like an ogre or a Shrek, a little bit. Okay. <laughs> but if you, I, I thought, it, I thought though that the aliens gave you this rock. I just found it somewhere. I didn't give, give me it. Like the, uh, it's like every day is a, a treasure hunt. When you go, when I walk my dog, I would find certain uh, things. So I have probably picked up a couple hundred rocks over a two, three year period, and I found that rock. But if you flip it around in four different ways, there's lots of different pictures. Of uh, alien faces. Yeah. yeah, I can sort of see like it looks like a female alien face. Sorry, what's that? Kind of it looks like a female alien face right here. I guess I don't know. No, no, there's like like those two white thing, like the the fence Latisse things, kind of looks like <laughs> uh, aliens. <laughs> But if you flip it around, there's lots of other alien okay. flight faces. And you want to tell us about this art piece? That is just uh, me making a painting. Sorry, one sec. Okay. Sorry, I apologize. <laughs> I thought I thought I thought that this all this art was from the aliens, though. So you're saying you're also well, artists that make more, some of this stuff. That was more me specific. Go to see those that rock that rock right there. That's my birthday rock. So it's for you to say. Oh, that's just your imagination. This rock, you cannot, I've asked, the pe person that bought my townhouse did um, flooring. And I showed him a rock and he's like, that's very difficult, if not impossible to do. I would, you know, that whole, the whole monolith thing uh, popping I'm, up. I'm, not, wait, I'm, I'm a little lost. What What's difficult to do? Drill a hole in a rock? Correct. And like that specifically. And I just found, I just, I was. I, I got a bench drill in my garage. I could do that. Really? Uh, yeah. All right. 
Okay, but yeah. I I didn't. I don't have a bench draw. Okay, but th so wait, so aliens gave this to you though. Perhaps. That's what I, mean. I cannot I cannot say definitively these things are 100% aliens. I just have lots of I cannot tell you where they come from or anything like that. It's just I found that on my birthday. Perhaps aliens drilled the rock. Where everyone made a huge hubbub over the um the monoliths appearing all over the world. Okay, I would now this one I gotta get to because this is supposed yeah. to be an alien shrimp that aliens gave you. Well, or sh fish or brain parasite. I don't. I haven't had any marine biologists uh, answer my. That is bizarre. Yeah. So the story with that is, I was just one day, just out of the blue, asking, "Hey, let me try some of your food," and I found it outside my bedroom door soon afterwards. After just like thinking aloud. I don't really And did you eat it or you just kept it? No, of course I have it for science. It's still I still have it. They gave you one shrimp? <laughs> I know. That like stingy aliens to me. You can't Buddy. just eat one <laughs> shrimp. That's like eating one potato chip, bro. I don't like these aliens already. They should at least hook you up with a basket of alien shrimp. You know? Like a maybe some alien french fries to go with the alien shrimp. So listen. If this is some kind of alien species of something, aren't you concerned that could turn into like, you know, the movie Species and kill you or something, or like Metamorph or something? <laughs> See, that's the thing. That's why they. That's probably why they picked me. I haven't seen Species. I haven't seen uh, a, a movie Alien. I've seen like little bits and pieces of it, but no, it's super tiny. You're not concerned with having no. an alien life form just chilling in your apartment or your house. <laughs> you just think. No, I can go wrong I, here, right? This is the start <laughs> of every bad alien movie, bro. Heck, yeah, I guess you're right. Well, that's that's why I'm here to to set, to set the record straight that aliens are not nefarious. Have you taken devil. this thing to any like biologists or any men of science that would know no, what it is? Nobody, nobody has answered. If anybody is listening to this and you have a marine biology or uh, DNA. Listen, that, this is another one of those things like, yeah, this could be an alien fish or an alien Look. shrimp that aliens gave you, or it could be a piece of shrimp that somebody took some green food coloring or paint to. No, I promise you, you know? not. I, I thought I found another one. I and did where do you get the brain parasite from? It could uh, be a brain it, parasite? No, because it's only one. there's only one eye to it, so I thought maybe it like attaches to you or something. There's only one eye. There's only one eye. A little, you can, if you zoom in, you can see a little translucent eye, and it does have a shell of a sh like kind of like a shrimp like thing, but it's it's small and green. It fits inside of a memory card case, like really, really tiny, it's super tiny, and only one eye. But uh, I did think I saw. I, I I was like you said, I was so pissed. I felt so yeah, bad. Yeah, I, I, there we have a good question from the audience. Do you have a family, and what does your family think of your alien fish and artwork and contact with extraterrestrials? Uh, my, my sister moved to St. Lucia. My mom passed away. My my oh, stepdad right. died. So it's just me. And uh, my, my, my cousins and aunts and uncles. There was mental illness that runs in my family. So when I told after a month of interacting with them, and I told my family, guys, I'm uh, interacting with aliens. They obviously thought I was crazy. But <laughs> my cousin, her daughter, and her grandmother on their side, they're all psychic. So they say being psychic, that's okay. That's fine, no problem. But me interacting with aliens, oh my goodness. So it's like a case of, of elitism, I guess, or... You're, they're allowed to be psychic, but I can't have <laughs> alien business partners. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so Tough. do these, do these aliens talk to you, or do they just leave in rocks and alien fish for you and things? Uh, kind. Of, it's 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 that's that's the hardest thing. I can't like because of the mental illness in my family. I guess they were really careful not to to talk to me too much. It's not like I have voices in my head or anything, nothing like that. But the one time <laughs> they put a word in my head, um, I saw I was I was um, I was about to go on an errand, and I'm just mumbling to myself, talking, whatever. And I I blurt out the word horse horseshit, horseshit, and then I repeat, I corrected myself, horseshit, 
don't think anything of it. Maybe that's just my own. Didn't really think of anything of it. But then about 15, 20 minutes later, I'm driving, stopped at a red light, and the license plate in front of me says Hefa Lump, H-E-F-A-L-U-M-P. So that may, <laughs> like stuff like, so they do like stuff like that. Put a word in your head. Put a word in your head. Just, to, 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 I don't know, predict the future or something like that. Another One of the ways, I, I try to like want to have a conversation with them, but you can't really. Everyone talks to themselves, you know, but maybe somebody's listening. You never know. Your space family. I don't. I don't have all the answers. I just have like that. Well, but listen, I I do want to say something to you, Richard, and I don't want this to come off the wrong way because I think you really believe all of this. And yep. uh, for all I know, you're absolutely right. I don't know, but I grew up with a mother that was schizophrenic. Oh, really? Yeah, mm -hmm. and that was very difficult. And uh, the one thing that I will ask that I. I hope that you really do this is yep. that you go uh, to a qualified mental health person just to rule out if for no other reason, okay. just to I rule did out. Actually, I did go a long time ago and you could, yeah. you could fool, you could fool your way through that. It's not and like also anything. if you, I if don't have any negative family. Thought, okay. And also if your family has uh, a predisposition to mental illness, it's a really bad idea to take hallucinogenic okay. drugs. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> too late. You've been taking a lot of hallucinogenic no, not that drugs, much. right? No, no, not that much. No, honestly, not that much. Trust me, trust me, not that much. <laughs> How many times a month do you take a hallucinogen? Zero. Okay, I think like once a year. Maybe like three times a year. Okay, but three, it's still times. dangerous if you have a predisposition yeah. to mental illness. That's what causes schizoid breakdowns in some schizophrenics. Well, uh, is the is the induction, you know, the introduction yeah. of, you know, because they're already schizophrenics are already have like a frayed sense of reality in some ways. So when but, you take this hallucinogenic drug on top of that, it really will tend to uh, cause issues, problems, mm -hmm. illusions. Yeah. And I'm not saying that's what's going on here. I'm just saying that you got to. Be sure to take care of your mental health with all of this, because this is kind of crazy, right, Richard? This is a little crazy <laughs> for anybody, the sanest but, person to handle. So, so maybe, but no, but maybe I saw I saw what the drugs did to my mom. They, 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 they she was like a maraca with all the drugs she would take. So maybe they they picked me because they knew that I'm not gonna go along that path and I could handle this. Honestly, it the way this is all folded out, I'm 100 convinced this has happened. That this is real, and it's not that big of a deal. People interact with aliens all the time. Uh, but going back, like my grand, my grandma, there were stories of my grandma throwing lamps at my at my grandpa and him walking out of the house. But but that was stories. I remember my grandma; they were married for over fifty years. <laughs> that I remember her uh, having. Yeah, uh, happening most, families. Most, most, yeah. most I'm a married family. man. I have fantasized about throwing a lamp at my wife every day of my life, bro. Well, <laughs> it's not a bit, you know. So once, one well, maybe one time, Grandma snapped and just did it. She think <laughs> about it, right? It's like thinking about that is like Valium for a man. Like I would just like to smack this, but you don't do it. But you think about it. Well, <laughs> so back to the. Back to the aliens. I'm going to try to find some other stuff here to share from your Twitter where you're sharing a lot of this stuff. We've seen the rock. We've seen this. Uh, and this is a, this is uh, from your book. So your book is just filled with art. But is, is every picture in the book from the aliens or manipulated by aliens somehow or helped Absolutely, along yes. by aliens? No, I'm, okay. I'm, I'll admit that every picture is staged. I, I'm the stage crew for Aliens. I sprinkle something down or I make a hodgepodge of artistic, uh, like, rocks, uh, things I found outside, and then that's just pot potpourri, and I wait, and... I'm a little confused, though. How is a tray of dried flowers transformed into a virtual reality wonderland? I asked, I asked for a smiley face in the sky, so it's... You have to look for smiley faces, but you have to keep moving... Moving uh, the screen, the image back, and there's a certain point where it, it turns into a picture. Yeah, maybe you have to use your imagination. Maybe you, I don't know, <laughs> you know. 
Again, if you're, if you're, 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 you're negative cloud, you're going, you're going, don't you think that everybody is going to find some kind of patterns in the chaos that you're, you know, it's like I said, hopefully, our hopefully. minds are designed to find patterns in chaos. That's why we look <laughs> sometimes and say, that looks like a uh, lion or that looks like a airplane. I don't know. Yeah, uh, I agree with you, but that that's just the way it is. Like, the world is a lot more complicated than we think it is. Honestly. Yeah, and I guess I had some misunderstanding because I didn't know that you yourself were as an artist before this. I thought that you had no, said no, that you before, just can't. Before this, I was not an artist at all. But after interacting with them for, oh, it's going to go on to four years now. Um, I started making music. If you go to my YouTube channel, Richard McGill, there's lots of different music. I would think there I'm a conduit for aliens because I just I'm like a one man Led Zeppelin band. Maybe you won't don't like it. Would I make? All right, that's you're fine. But yeah, I, I didn't make any paintings before I started interacting with aliens. But the paintings. So you think that the interaction with the aliens was the trigger for some kind of artistic talent that you never had before? That the title of my book, What Do You Mean Aliens Aren't Real? I don't know how to make virtual reality art. I'm just a trigger man. <laughs> well, we, there we, have we, been, Richard, there yeah. have been documented cases of people having abduction experiences and then suddenly gaining savant like abilities. I've read this in yeah. several different books. I can't recall off the top of my head, but I'm sure that I have heard. Well, I don't think people, is after that... an abduction, I read of one girl who, after an abduction, came back from the abduction. She always wanted to play piano, and somehow she told the aliens that she never learned piano. She couldn't play the piano to save her life. She gets back from the experience, and she's like a concert level gifted pianist. Really? Yeah. yeah. So maybe there is some larger phenomenon where people. When they have interactions with these beings, can somehow gain new, I don't know, skills, exactly. talents. Probably because if you if you offered me a million dollars and said reproduce that music that that song note for note, I would not be able to do it at all. And that's when I first the, the music on my YouTube channel that um, I didn't even um, I just started learning a few chords, just just jamming away. So hopefully you enjoy that. Hopefully, I'm most likely alien. If it's good, it's aliens help me. If it's not good, it's all me. <laughs> but the, the <laughs> well, yeah, and that's what I have to ask you about because I, I don't understand. You, you tweet this. I need everyone's help. My business partners are extraterrestrials. They won't finish making our company logo until I get on the Joe Rogan podcast. <laughs> yes. Check that... out invisible UFOs making art on the back of this cross stitch picture. See, that's that's uh, it's it's evolved from um, uh, me just sprinkling a substance, whether it be flour or charcoal, ground powdered charcoal, to that picture. But 10, 15 years ago, I uh, was walking my dog, and uh, I you want to put that picture on the screen so everyone knows what we're talking about? That might help. <laughs> no? Oh, I'm sorry. The, the, the tigers, right? The, the cats. Tiger. Yeah, 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 correct. So I'm walking my dog and I found it that uh, a cross stitch picture. Someone spent 10, 15 hours, I don't know how many hours, making a picture uh, of big cats. And uh, it was complete, 100% complete. So I don't know, after experimenting with hundreds of different substances, not drug substances, <laughs> uh, substances of art, for some reason I thought, hey, let me watch this picture and lo and behold it, it they somehow fastidiously how they make when you think crop circles they they uh intertwine it the 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 the, the, the crop so that maybe, wasn't the alien was it bro pardon me no it's my buddy very <laughs> oh okay as long as the aliens are here live you know. ab live abduction <laughs> no so <laughs> I apologize. Yeah, that'd be good for ratings, though. So maybe <laughs> on part two. You know. it, hopefully, people are seeing that it's continuously moving. It's if you, you, honestly, I can see it. It takes a while, and if we don't pay attention, aliens like a, like an audience. If you don't pay attention, Daniel, please come on. Sorry, 
I, I'm in his garage because I sold my laptop. I've invested about 50 <laughs> <laughs> so I'm using I'm using his laptop. Well, I got my yeah, own. You quit. It's okay, bro. I've done it. I've I've had it. Yeah. Well, you're so him, bro. Getting... No, not really. <laughs> okay, so getting I can't find the picture. The um, all I did is flip the 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 picture, watch pic, uh, aliens hours and hours moving moving it. And if you look at the the actual cat's picture, all oh, there's black in the face. So you say, oh, it's just my imagination. Oh, it's just no, it's just light reflected off it. This is a thing where it's they actually move the strings. I probably I don't I didn't have a picture of it complete, unfortunately. I didn't think. Do that. So, but if you put up the, the picture of the cats, right, so you're saying that aliens made the cats by what? So, Manipulating the material on top of this black sheet or no, something? No, no, no. no, I said they didn't make. I don't know if they made, made the actual picture, but they made a picture on the opposite side. I flipped oh, okay, it around. I'm sorry, I, I didn't realize that I stopped the share screen. So let me get back to that. I, I apologize. I thought we had that up on the screen. Yeah. So no, no, the cat. Yeah, correct. There you go. That that was complete. If you zoom into the zoom into it, and you can see if you can. I don't know if you can. No, uh, I can't really hear. You. No. Uh, someone take a screenshot of it and zoom it in later, or you, you go to my Twitter account. You'll see it. Richard McGill number two. Um, sure. So all the black, all black in the face, all the black space in the faces was not there. It was a hundred percent complete. And just somehow, after experimenting with hundreds of different substances, I thought, hey, let me flip it around and watch. And most likely they're waiting for me to go on the Joe Rogan podcast. I'll just bring the t-shirt that I, I uh, got it sewn on to put it out and hopefully it'll be a better demonstration than this. But yeah, there, that's the, t that's the opposite side that they started to make a picture. I've watched hours with hours, but it's not complete. Most likely I'll go on the Joe Rogan podcast. You'll see a little, uh, uh, fog or mist that it's not the marijuana smoke. And they'll finish it, and then oh, okay, aliens are real. Problem solved. Let's move on. Let's 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 not to keep debating whether aliens are real or not. Like it's not. It's well, you know. Here's what I'll say on that issue. I don't have any doubt in my mind that there's intelligent species somewhere else out there in the universe. the The problem for me is bridging that belief, which is a very rational belief. Just considering the space issue. Why would there be just us in this huge, vast expanse of space that's endless or seemingly endless? Mm -hmm. There's got to be another evolved species, and especially when we see how life fights to survive in the craziest conditions, hundreds of feet under ice glaciers, whatever. Exactly. Life finds a way. So I believe there's intelligent life, but I'm not so sure that they're here or visiting or interacting or mm. I'd like I'd like to think they are but uh, it seems to me that the proof of these things always seems to be it's hard it's hard somewhat, to get yeah somewhat lacking right it's That's a little bit I've, like <coughs> I spent three years trying to get all the proof there's 1400 pictures <laughs> in this book so um, the the I can't, the so again, let me go back to this one. Nothing. In the, I took in the night sky in my backyard. I took a when I the very first when you do something nice for them, they reciprocate. So I bought. Um, a, Sounds like nice aliens then. Absolutely. It's, they didn't try to like anally probe you or fuck you no, or anything ever. I knew you were gonna ask that because like, there's other aliens out there, bro, and they want to fuck us and eat us, according to some people. And I'm very concerned. I know. I, I want to get fucked or eaten. By aliens, bro. I, I saw your your last video, so I'm like, oh, obviously he's gonna ask me that. <laughs> the, the I fucked an alien <laughs> thing. Yeah, so I like uh, it. <laughs> um, I'll admit. Okay, one time, <laughs> one time I did ask. Hey, let me. I, I wouldn't like a bigger dick, you know. And as soon as I thought that or said that, I felt like a sharp prick, not like underneath my balls. I'm like, ah, get it out, get it out. <laughs> but uh yeah you could have you could have like sex with them too but it's it's not it, like what the i've watched that movie are you talking about the love and love and saucers david higgins i watched yeah. I've, I've bought that whole i bought it i've read six books on the subject and i've watched a couple documentaries trying to figure things out so i've watched him that thing and 
clinical psych psych psychiatrist or psychologist said, "Oh, I've actually had an experience like that too." He's got hundreds of of uh, videos about aliens. He's reading a book saying, "Oh, you know, some of they this has happened." Why do you think that, David? Oh, God, I just read it in a book. But this clinical psychologist says, "Oh, it's um, he's he's reading all these books because of that, so it's actually truthful." But he has no proof to back it up. I have simple. Uh, again, I just want to show you this one because it's so uh, blatant. Of of uh, so nothing. Uh, in, I just sh filming and shooting in the back in my backyard when I got a zoom lens on my camera. Nothing. I adjust the settings. And then this this thing, you, you, uh, like I don't know. To me, that could be like a laser pointer, or it could no, be. There's, a seven, lot of there's seven specific objects, seven distinct objects. Okay, so it's hard to see from the from the book you're holding up. I, see, I sent you that picture too. Okay, I, I sent you that picture. But I I talk it to I've, I've talked to um, an astrophotographer, and he says he can't figure out what what that is. He did, it's a UAP. So if they're interdimensional, it's hard to find. Yeah, that's the that's the Venezuela. There you go, right there. Yeah, nope, you just pass it. Yeah, that one, that one's that's the seven object one I just showed you, the original, the original that the one in the book. Okay. Try to adjust. You, All right, so we, we just need to get better quality pictures then, because maybe I'm not yeah. seeing exactly what's going on. And uh, yeah, I'm sorry, but I have my messages. All on the side there, and I want to share. Something. Perhaps take out. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so uh, are you an alien with your sunglasses going on there? I'm What's that? Kidding. Are you an yeah. alien with your sunglasses? Yeah. yeah. I have my eyes for a reason because I have reptilian eyes. That's oh. <laughs> those contacts are too uncomfortable. I'd rather just wear the. Yeah. Well, I'm, I so, do wear uh, I do wear contacts, so yeah. <laughs> so. I'm I'm still a little unclear then. So people are asking in a live chat, how do you expect to get on the Joe Rogan show? Do you have like aliens intervening on your behalf? Because that's pretty hard to get booked on. <laughs> I know. Tell me about it. to go from a forklift driver to uh, to Joe. That's why I appreciate this. You uh, having well, me you're starting right at the fucking bottom, bro. I know. That's your aspiration. No. <laughs> you are at the shit bottom of podcast. Really? Shit hell right here, bro. Thank you. I have oh. nowhere to go. But here's the good news. There's nowhere to go after this but up for you. Not right? necessarily. Everything you do after this is going to be a big step up. Or you. people think it's I'm a stepping stone. You're stepping right on my head. You yeah. got to, you know, ladder up, get to the bigger shows, and then eventually Joe I'm, Rogan, maybe. I'm making my bones right here, buddy. <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm, <laughs> this is actually my fifth podcast. I've done... You had me at Bigfoot, Paranormal Heart with Cat Ward, Podcast Mystery. I've even done an Australian one with Oddball Ozzy. So this, you're my fit. You're my first video. Other four are just audio. So I, I was hoping that we could show this, and lo and behold, they see it moving. But everyone's not paying attention, or it takes a long time. Well, maybe I got to rewind and keep watching it or something, right? No, but but at the same time, there's a light, so me moving, it's gonna seem it's it's hard to see. That's why the Joe Rogan picture. <laughs> <laughs> and let's take some let's take some questions from the live audience, right? If you don't mind, before you become a huge star, that people want to ask you questions directly, right? Before you become too big to. Oh. Uh, Richard, which I Earth really artist is most respected in the uh, Alien Federation? I figured either oh. Salvador Dali, M. C. Escher, or David Bowie. I vote David Bowie, but I'm biased. I'm glad that they actually asked that. I described the art as a mixture of uh, Salvador Dali and Walt Disney. So that's that's why uh, the uh, if you ever if you ever seen the um, oh, I was just gonna read a quote from Salvador Dali, but um, uh, that's Tesla. Um, I, I believe that the moment is near when, by a procedure of active paranoic thought, it will be possible to systematize confusion. And contribute to the total discredit discrediting of the world of reality, Salvador Dali. I do have a lot of quotes. Quote. Yeah, exactly. I have a whole bunch of quotes from all over. Okay, but another question. I think this is a no, good no, question. No. Oh, I'm sorry. Go uh, ahead. The, um, the 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 selfie. We never finished the selfie. Uh, I can't find it here. Um, if you if you people know, there's a famous picture of um, Salvador Dali. It's called da Dali Atomicus. It's him with like throwing cats around. It's a crazy picture. 
look it up if you don't know what it is. But the selfie, I think, I can't find it now. It's is kind of like an homage to them. I I believe I would say, I can't find it. when you need it. You can't find it, right? Yeah, that's yeah, quite that's right. right. That's quite right. And the next question was, how does he get the confirmation his art is ET and not just psychedelia influenced? So how do you know this is aliens and it's not just all coming from you taking hallucinogenic drugs or other drugs or alcohol related stuff? Is this two moons? I don't know. I've feel free to reproduce this picture because I maybe there is a a logical way to do this. Honestly, I'm just experimenting with things. So on the Bigfoot podcast, the guys like, uh, what do you have to show us? Pictures? And I'm like, I got really pissed off. I'm like, yeah, I'm the photographer to extraterrestrials. I have pictures. So it's hard to maybe. Sure. Maybe somebody it, asked what what your yeah. first alien or ET contact. What was your first? I already mentioned that. Yeah, you did. She should be. He mentioned it in the beginning of the show. Um, okay. Does he, uh, but when I, <laughs> I didn't even know that they that Venezuela picture. It it looks like um, the Dark Knight, Dark Knight, Black Knight, Black uh, Dark Knight. No, Black Knight satellites. You familiar with that? That yeah. uh, that we did a show on it. Oh yeah. We did yeah, a show so, on the Black Knight satellite. Sure. Um, the Abba Ozzy guy was saying that they it, it's never come down that close. So if you want to show the, the Venezuela picture, you you scroll past it quickly. I think it kind of looks like that, like that, but it's big and down close on Earth. So that, but I didn't even know that they were. So they had their eye on me for at least fifteen years, most likely. If that is a UFO, but uh, yeah. <laughs> And yeah. and yeah, somebody said you, you didn't mention a conversation with aliens or why aliens are working through you. Uh, uh, why me? Uh, that's the I do have a talk. Yeah, yeah, listen, I do have a listen. Here here's one thing I'll say is that like yeah. most people in this game doing what you're uh, doing or in for the thing go forward for doing, they they're always special. Like they all the people <laughs> on planet Earth. To be the 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 conduit for aliens, yeah, it's, exactly. It's them. So I do wonder, like that too, like uh, why you and not, you know, uh, well, your know. neighbor or. Well, I was the winning sperm. Remember that, you know. I I probably cherry picked. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't really know why you then. Uh, I have trying well, to drill I, have, I, have, I can read you a top ten list of why I put reasons in, but they're all mainly jokingly. Why me? Because um, maybe partially my family, maybe my mother, when she passed away, she forced, maybe she's an alien now, it's her spirit. You know, I think it's like they're mainly come down as uh, light energy into like aliens. So it's not like skin and bones uh, aliens. So perhaps that my uncle or no, my grandpa, when he, he used to fly um, air, air, uh, paratroopers over enemy lines in World War II. And he was asked to fly Winston Churchill to meet with Roosevelt and Stalin in a place called Yalta. But his he had his he had a son that he never seen for two years. He asked his wife, and she said, "You go fly Churchill. Don't bother coming back." So he never did. So maybe my past, my I'm a creative person that I was able to do this. It's like a dream job of I want advertising and being a lawyer. So this is like I have a, a dream job, a mixture of both of those. Aliens are my one client, and I have to prove that they're real, which is obviously no one has definitively done that, and I probably haven't done that either. But hopefully, it's a start. <laughs> well, <laughs> at least we're <laughs> open to other possibilities because some people in this game are like, no, no, it's aliens, bro. And uh, if you disbelieve them or ask questions, they don't. At least you're open you to be questioning things and saying, absolutely wow, this, because it's a pretty crazy story, there, Richard. Just so you yeah, know, I think it was that crazy. It's a little crazy, yeah, yeah a little, little bit. Little it's like uh, you know, but on the believability scale, I don't know. You know, these things are weird. And one of the things about experiencers that I find interesting is that sometimes. Uh, they can't prove that they're talking to aliens, but 
I can't disprove that they're talking to aliens, right? So yeah. you reach this sort of gray basket in between and you go, is Richard the Trigger Man McGill really talking to aliens? Okay, so tonight, I don't know. Tonight, go home and try and drill a rock in the corner of a little rock. Well, first off, go out and pick five random rocks. And if one of those rocks <laughs> has a drill hole in it, then it's just a coincidence. It's not anything. Or try and take a picture with two moons like that. Maybe there's camera settings, the reflection or something. But, you know. <laughs> if somebody asks, how, Spooky asks, how do we know that it's not paranormal and not ET? Well, that's a little confusing question. Maybe it's paranormal, and I, I think she means maybe no, like, it's paranormal it's, it's, and not so, ET. Like, like yeah, this could be demons instead of aliens for all you know, right? <laughs> Perhaps. Maybe it's the same thing. Like, I honestly think angels, when people say angels or... or yeah, archangels. somebody else is saying, why why the denomination of aliens and not just say spirits? Because, because of how it all started of me trying to interact with the stars, right? They okay. a little float. So you assume that because it came from the stars that it's got to be aliens and not spirits. Correct, correct. I guess that's a fair assumption, right? Mm -hmm. So how how often are you in contact with these aliens? Is this daily? Is this you know? Do you get a yeah? It's you can think of think and just talk to them all the time. I could just make art with them anytime I want. But it's not like, oh, I have to sit and put up some candles and pray or anything. It's nothing like that anymore. It's just like all the time, basically. But but if you don't pay attention to them, they you don't they don't pay attention to you really. So it's like my sister when she was when I started interacting with them, and I say, oh, I'm doing this this, and she was completely oblivious to it. So she didn't believe it, and nothing happened to her. Okay, but I have a question from Spooky. Have you ever painted on or after a DMT trip? Never done DMT. No? What yeah. hallucinogens have you done now? Mushrooms and uh, acid. Like LSD for? Yeah. Tab yeah. under your tongue? Uh, yeah, yeah. You Correct. usually take one or more than one? Just one. Just one? Have, yeah, just one, yeah. Maybe <laughs> I two, maybe once. But yeah. no, I'm, I'm not sometimes really one is that. enough. Like how, I remember, how long of a of a trip do you have in your recollection for the LSD that you're taking? Four to six hours, maybe. Four to six hours. Yeah, I, I heard well, it's shorter right. now. And when I was coming up, that, you're in it for a day, dude. You're really? Twenty four hours. You're get ready. Yeah, <laughs> I hear it's a little less now. I guess. Mm -hmm. that, Perfect it to formula because nobody wants to do that shit for 24 hours straight. It's not <laughs> fun after the first five hours. <laughs> yeah. Now, I remember when I first started, I took, uh, you take a small amount of shrooms, it's nice, but you do like a couple of I remember <laughs> I was working at a, a pizza place, running a pizza place, and I took, I took some, put some shrooms on the pizza, and that was not a good idea. <laughs> Uh, people like a homeless guy comes in and gives me candy and I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> and then a person's like doing ballerina dancing out there. I couldn't do the paperwork. Do not drive on shrooms. I <laughs> <laughs> Somebody asked what accident. Five minutes, like, five minutes, minute, five minutes drive home, but it was like a video game. I couldn't do the paperwork. No. Couldn't, couldn't mop the floor. I came back the next day and the boss, the real boss comes in and, she's like, and I'm mopping the floor. Like, what are you doing here? It was not a good... <laughs> Good Somebody asked what I think about your accent. Where are you from originally? I'm Jewish. I'm Canadian. I'm from my mother's vagina. <laughs> no, I just I'm mean Bruce regionally. Canadian. So yeah, you do have a little bit of a strange accent. So oh, yeah? that's probably why you're like Jewish I gotta, and I gotta, Canadian. I got a P. I got a P really bad. So that might help the the. Just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Well, actually, we're going to probably wrap this up here. Uh, oh, yeah? You know, I, I guess I wish you the best of luck getting on Joe Rogan and, uh, Thank you, so you know, <laughs> furthering the aliens agenda. But I hope they're good aliens. No, but they picked me because they found someone who's willing to give 50% of the profits to charity. Does Stephen Greer talks a good game? He's the whole help humanity. But for all his uh, field trips to Joshua Tree or wherever he goes, does he give 50% of the profits to charity? I, I haven't looked. I, I don't I, think so. I don't think he gives anything. Yeah, well, you're right. 
You're right. So, well, that's yeah, very. Well, uh... I've got 4,800 books available. They're not available on Amazon. They're not available on uh, Walmart. You go to my Twitter page. 50 US dollars shipping, um, uh, tax, everything included. I've only shipped one to internationally. Shout outs to at Rock Hawk. He, he realized that uh, he wanted a copy of the book and he trusted me to PayPal me 50 bucks and I sent him a book. Is that what the book costs? It's 50 bucks. And this is your book full of alien stuff. Correct. It's Correct. all about the aliens and paintings and artwork it's of the aliens. I do have one page of um, this is me in Venezuela when I was 19. I do have one ancient alien uh, on, uh, picture from the Kama Sutra. If you look in uh, the the um, the mirror, or I'm guessing uh, tablet or something, it's a different person than she's having sex with. Okay, and I'm going to put your uh, your Twitter uh, link in the in the live chat. Please so buy my book so I can book. not have uh, do Joe, Joe Rogan podcast in, a, in my buddy's garage. Please. <laughs> <laughs> so you got 4,800 books left. How many have you sold? A few hundred? A few hundred. I, about 5,000. The next, the next uh, if you don't, when the, once these are sold out, then I'm going to revise it a little bit and use at least 30% recycled paper. You know, the first order of business is cleaning up the plastics in the ocean. And how do and how do I bolster my claim that aliens are my business partner? Is oh, I have a little alien fish, most likely. So if anyone is a marine biologist, contact me, please. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to see further study of the alien shrimp thing. I do yeah. have that. Yep. Yeah. And that's something I never thought I'd have to say. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, listen, Richard. I wish you the best in your future endeavors. This has been an interesting conversation, but I do what? want to encourage you to. Uh, Get us some psychiatric help. <laughs> yeah, just to check, make sure, bro. You know, check, I, got a family. Know. I don't know. I'm sensitive to these things because my yeah. family, the I other know. side of my family, has a propensity towards schizophrenia and mental mm -hmm. illness and things like That's that. So, exactly. if somebody in our family starts talking about aliens or whatever, we we try to just make sure they're seeing somebody just in case. And yeah, your you know? whole your whole show is on <laughs> that subject. So Pratt, why did that get you interested in that? Well, I had my own experience when I was younger. Yeah, I saw something like a flying saucer. So that ignited my curiosity and I started reading books, documentaries and things like that. And yeah. here we are. And now I want to still want to know what it is that I saw. So uh, yeah, always exactly. exploring this area, I suppose. Mm -hmm. But, but so, I hope you get. I hope you do get on Joe Rogan. That would be they, awesome. That's the thing, though. Like they talk to you telepathically. So any, it's how do we uh, juggle between tele uh, telepathic communication between aliens and schizophrenic? You hearing voices? If they're ne if they're negative, telling you to do bad things, schizophrenic. If they're playing jovial games, playing you word games, putting words in your head. Like uh, one of the ways I. Um, Try to inch, try to f figure out whether it's communicating with uh, aliens or uh, just my imagination is to open up, ask them to give me a word before I open a fortune cookie, right? So one of the, the best thing was um, hiccups. All right, and I open the for take off the wrapper, open the fortune cookie. The fortune says, "Be prepared for a sudden and unexpected change of events." Hiccups. They're not evil. They're not out to get you. <laughs> okay. It could be a coincidence. Again, it could be a coincidence. Yeah. But it could be. I don't know. Could be. Yeah. Well, listen, I, I really did enjoy our talk, so I, I want to uh, wish you the best of luck. I'm going to throw you out here and do a quick wrap-up. Maybe we'll do it again sometime. if you. For uh, sure. <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. All Much right. Thank much. you, Richard, the Trigger Man McGill. And you can find him on Twitter, friends. I put his Twitter address in the, in the live chat. Uh, check out his book. You have a good night, Richard. Okay, friends. So, look, I went into this like I don't know too much about this, and I, I don't know what to think. I'd love to believe that he's talking to aliens and the aliens are helping him with his artwork or creating artwork. Or It's interesting to think that could be true. Uh, certainly a lot of other possibilities that make me wonder, though. And... Uh, yeah i i know that was something that's all i'll say i didn't know whether this was gonna 
it, I don't know. I just said, book it. We'll just talk to him on air. I'm not going to, you know, I didn't look too deeply into his claims and just sort of, yeah, uh, interesting guy. I like artistic, creative people too. And uh, yeah, so it is what it is, friends. And I guess I'm going to use that thing that all show hosts use and say, use your discernment. We heard about his experiences. I try to play the devil's advocate. I didn't want to hammer him too much uh, that these things could be aliens or these things could be something a little more mundane or not so extraordinary, right? I guess it's all about your perceptions um, and how you interpret things as well. Like I said, uh, it's easy if, uh, you know, you, you step back and stare at a, at a picture for 30 seconds, you, you, your eyes might begin to see things in that picture or the picture may begin to move, right? You know, that sensation of staring off into space so intently that the things blur you know, or a uh, double vision begins. Uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of explanations for some of these things. And I'm not sure that uh, Richard jumping to it must be aliens is either appropriate or warranted given his level of uh, evidentiary support for his claims. But he's an experiencer. I have respect that he, uh, you know, let me ask any questions that I wanted to, right? So... Uh, friends, it is what it is. Uh, trying to bring interesting people here to interview. Um, yeah, and uh, Lord Doe says, fantastic interview. More of these types on, please. I had a great time. Good. Uh, I'm glad. Uh, wasn't sure how this was going to go over. But I'm looking for more experiencers. If anybody knows any experiencers, anyone having experiences with aliens, demons, uh, Bigfoot, I don't care. If they've had these kind of experiences, send them to me. You can have them email me at truthseekershow at gmail.com. So we'll be looking for future guests for shows a lot like this. That would be very helpful. Uh, I want to just remind everybody that we do have both uh, Patreon and uh, PayPal donate button in the about section. So Please, if you're feeling generous, do help us out with a couple of bucks. Uh, and if not, or sign up for our Patreon. That really does help. Um, but the other way to help me, of course, is to like, comment, and share these videos. Subscribe if you have not already. Send our channel address to some friends. That would really, uh, would really help. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and send the channel address to some friends. This, my friends, is how we make yet continue to grow kind of struggling with the growth thing here lately i started a rumble channel i thought it was going pretty good like the first video i uploaded got 40 views and then the rest got like six views so i don't know that it's worth the time to continue doing that uh yeah and as far as the super chat donations people are asking about that i'm still waiting for youtube they take a month before they approve you for that and uh I got to tell you, I'm a little worried that they're going to take a look at some of these videos and go, no, well, I don't think so. But it is what it is. Uh, I'm going to just remain positive, you know, and hopeful. Uh, so it is what it is, friends. Uh, this is where we find ourselves. There will be a show once again tomorrow. Uh, something that I've been looking into that I just wanted to share that I think is... Uh, a little disturbing, even more so than tonight's content. Uh, I don't want to spill the beans. So tomorrow, please join me at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for uh, what I hope to be a sort of new series on the dark side of conspiracy land, the dark side of some of these strange stories out there on the Internet that are true. Crazy, but true. I don't know. Uh, we've got to come up with a title for the new series. Uh, I want to have uh, also, I'm working on 
a, a new sort of show format where I'm going to try to do a show, one show where we pivot from different stories so that you can get not, you know, we're not going to focus on one story for two hours. We're going to maybe do each story for 20 minutes and present a bunch of cool stories that we can all learn about and discuss. I think that would be a good idea. Yeah, friends. So uh, I always, you always hear me say this. I'm always happy when there is a, a live audience. And I want to thank you very much tonight for being a part of mine. I want to uh, thank Richard for being our guest. Again, you can find him on Twitter. Really do. Hey, uh, creative artistic guy. Uh, check out his book full of art. He obviously believes in what he's doing. And uh, God bless uh, people that really believe what they're do in what they're doing. You know, I hope that he raises a lot of money and gives some of this money to charity. Uh, maybe he truly can help the world with his uh, alien friends if they're real. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, that's where we're at, friends. So until next time, friends, my name is Stephen Cambion. Good night and God bless all of you. Yeah.